Window in house. Dumb idea, but here it comes. We can open this window all the way from here to here. Then it's all the way open. If it's open, full lift and back to shut. Full lift, back to shut. Full lift, back to shut while the piston's going up and down, right? Okay. Just wanted to try and break that down for you so you can understand because there is not one, fi one size fits all. When we were racing the Pro Stockers back in the day, we were running, a, the first thing we did was we ran a four valve Suzuki GS, 1980, let's see, 80, they quit making them I think in 85, the GS 1150. But in Pro Stock, we, we took that head and modified it and ran Pro Stock with it. We tripled the horse, no we didn't. We doubled the horsepower pretty easy, maybe more than double. I think we got to two and a half horsepower per cubic inch back in the day with that old uh, GS head. And what was cool was, is at first, all we could do was put more camshaft in it. Just like the Chevrolets when we started racing, small block Chevys, big block Chevys, the heads were our limit. So we would just put a ton of camshaft in it. I don't know if you guys are old enough or remember the super, super stock cars at the drag strip. They would always sound like the most radical engines because the NHRA rules and the IHRA rules made those guys run stock heads. And when I say stock heads, they were the cast heads that came on the engine, the 350 Chevrolets and the Mopars and the Fords and the Chryslers and, and all those big blocks. They were stock heads. So the only way we could get enough air in the engine to make a racing in the engine out of it was to put a really big cam. And the heads were not designed to put a lot of lift in them because the valves were really short. Stock valves were really short. And if you wanted to lift it a lot, the, the head would only be this big and the spring pocket would be here and you had to run stock valves. So that's the biggest spring you could put in there is this far. So once you would go to full lift, the spring would stack up like this. It would look like just stacked up. Well, once that's stacked up, that's the most lift you could run. So then as, as history grows, you can see that we went into uh, stud girdles. We went into uh, to try to control these. So also we went into um, spacers for the, for the valve covers. And then one day, all of a sudden, the valve covers, small block Chevy valve cover used to look kind of like this. And then all of a sudden, now they look like this. And that was so we could get longer valves and taller springs so we could put some more lift in it and put rock arms, more powerful and stronger rock arms into it. That's the old days. So we're, we're living through all that with the Harleys now. And this, this is something that's just uncovering itself. Hot, the hot rod Harley business has been going on just as long as the hot rod car business it really has. Somebody asked the other day, I saw on the internet said, when was the first motorcycle race? And they said it was when the second motorcycle was built. That's when they had the first race. And we, we're gonna, we've been racing motorcycles and cars ever since they had wheels and engines. So, hey, you guys that think you came in late, you didn't miss anything. Hey, John, also look, I'm gonna record this live show and then Monica will put it on the internet. She will put it on, um, I think it's YouTube. And I, this is number 46, y'all. Think about that. This is 46 weeks in a row that we've had Tech Talk Tuesday. That's crazy. So back, back to the camshaft story. The, we ran the four valves for a while and we learned a lot about how little of a camshaft we needed. When I say little, I'm talking about all the lift we could get, but we didn't want it open long because you lose a lot of uh, work when you have the valve open too long because when the piston goes down on the intake stroke and then it comes back up on the compression stroke, then it goes down on the power stroke, and then it goes back up on the exhaust stroke, there is only one small section in there where you can actually squeeze it, light it, and bang, put power to the to the crank. And so it's it's a very small part. That up and down, look y'all, the, the, um, the intake stroke, the compression stroke, the power stroke, and then the exhaust stroke. This is very elementary. This takes 180, 180, 180, and 180. You add all those up, you get 720. 720 degrees. But the power is only made in a very small spot. So you want to try and take advantage of that 
why you can. You want, the, you want to be able to open the valve exactly at the right time and have it open as far as it needs to go, as it can, exactly at the right time. And then you want to close it exactly at the right time. And that's going to make all the difference in the world. Given the cylinder head you have that day, when I say that day, I'm talking about cylinder heads are in rapid development right now. If you look back at the car stuff I was talking about, the small block Chevys, for instance, they had little baby valves, little baby ports, and you can, man, I'm getting messages from stuff I was working on today. It's very distracting. But, hey, look, I'm thankful to hear back from these guys. Hey, Ed, Patrick, Ian, I appreciate Dave, you guys. Uh, I just, yeah, I'll start over as soon as you watch this recording after it's recorded live. That's funny right there. Jack, um, back to the deal is if your cylinder, as our cylinder heads got better and better, the need for more and more camshaft became less. And the more flow we made, the more camshaft we said, wow, we can make more power if we get this timing right. So the lift will always be the lift. The lift will be the most lift we can run. Hey, Yaska. It's English for you, man. Hey, I've been reading some of your stuff about why you guys have a little bit, you know what, it's all political over there too. Wow. How about that? How about let's, me and you agree not to go political right now and let's work on um, camshafts. <laughs> Yasko's really good at that stuff, too. He's a really smart dude. He lives in Finland, and he tries to speak English, and I, we call it Finglish, and I live in America, and I try to talk English, and I have a hard time because I'm just Southern, and Southern people have a hard enough time with the English language, never mind trying to speak Finnish. Yeah, Scott, start over. But anyway, back to, hey, Ken, Scott, back back to the deal. As we, as we get better flowing cylinder heads, the the cam timing becomes less of a need to open it so soon and close it so late and open the exhaust valve so early and close it so late. And back in the day when head flow was our limitation, we had so much overlap. We had this deal where the exhaust cam and the intake cam would both be open at the same time in this area. And we had so much overlap that we would bleed a lot of the pressure of the 720 degrees would bleed out go back up the intake, go out the exhaust at the wrong time, some intake would go out the exhaust, and it was just not very efficient. So as our cylinder heads get better and better, look at a pro stock car head now, like an old small block Chevy head was this big, and a, and a pro stock car head now, like it's on the 500 inch NHRA stuff, their heads are about this tall. And I know that looks exaggerated, but that's, these ports were here, and now the ports look like this, and the valves were this tall, and now the valves are this tall. All of that is to get more air in the engine. And as we learn and as we grow, we found out that still didn't get enough camshaft lift. We need more lift. We need bigger valves. We need bigger flow. We need bigger ports. But we need to control the cam timing so we don't leak and bleed out the pressures that we need to contain. Four valve. Go back to the four valve deal. Think about it. You're getting way more air in. I, just, I think that on a really good Harley head, you know what's sad about this? There's nothing for you to look at. Let's flip this over a minute until I get ready to show you the board. Let me see. <clears throat> okay. I don't know if that's it. I'm probably not any better to look at, but at least we're looking and talking to somebody. I don't know if you can see me, but I don't see you. Back to the story. So as we got the heads flowing so much, like with a four valve, if you check uh, a good Harley-Davidson two valve head, like a twin cam, and at 100 lift, where the valve is just 100 off the seat, you may, let's just say you get 50 CFM, okay, at some pressure. If you took the exact same bore size and put a four valve head, like a Milwaukee 8 head on that engine, you could flow two, I mean 100 CFM in the same place that the two valve head only flowed 50. So that's double the airflow. Not at full lift, not at all the numbers, but at some low lift points, you can get double the airflow with a four valve over a two valve. And, the, and this is, goes back to a week or two weeks ago when I did the curtain area story. You can look back on YouTube and see that. Man, somebody watching me is sending me messages. The uh, you guys that are sending me messages right now, I'm live, I'm having my tech talk, so I'm sorry I'm not gonna be able to respond right now. You're just gonna be distracting. Hey, Dan, JJ, Carlton, it was nice to see you guys on here. But anyway, um, try not to get 
distracted again, but the, at, at the cam timing, remember, the lift is all the lift that we can get, okay? Um, I might have to tell this guy to quit. He is just sending it like, you know, like a machine gun. One line, one question, one line, one question, over and over and over, and it's just trying to be, you know, I, I'm gonna pay attention to what I'm telling you guys now. So, one cam, I'm gonna say, it's just a one fell swoop con co comment that, that lift, I run the most lift I can, okay? Not trying to overdo the valve springs, not trying to do overdo the push rods or the lifters, but a big valve and a lot of lift will ask for a lot smaller camshaft. I'm not talking about lift, I'm talking about duration, timing. So when George Bryce or, uh, or our guys, we say, Big cam, little cam, medium size cam. You'd think we're talking lift, 200, 400, 600 lift. No, I'm talking about duration. And um, back in the day, I told you that the, the four events of the cam timing is what matters. Don't know about lobe centers, don't know much about overlap, but I can tell you when they open and when they close. And the intake opening, nope, sorry, red lighted. Intake closing is my number one most important event. None of them are useless all of them are very important but my most important one for me for good engine development is my intake valve closing my second one is my exhaust valve opening and then tied for last place is when the intake opens and when the exhaust closes the in, when the intake opens if you open it really early you'll be at a better lift point in the intake stroke on the on the uh, when the piston's going down on the intake so you're you'll be further along in the lift curve at peak piston speed which is a little bit too technical talk for some, but when the piston's going down on the intake stroke, you want the valve to chase it as fast as it can. When the piston stops at the bottom and it fills up with air, as soon as that pressure equals what's outside, you wanna shut that intake valve. And that's why that's my most important event is the intake closing. Okay, then the next most important one is the exhaust opening because the exhaust valve is so little on four valves and so little on the two valves that we have a lot of stuff in there to get out and there's not very much time to do it. So we have to start early and we're learning every day how soon we can start it because general belief in, the, in our industry is you want the piston to go down as far as you can on the compression, I mean on the power stroke and turn the crank as far as you can before you open the exhaust valve because when you open the exhaust valve, it happens about halfway down the power stroke. And I know that sounds crazy, y'all, but think about it. The exhaust valve opens halfway down the power stroke. That seems like it would just bleed off power. But if you don't start it that soon, you won't get it out before it's time for the intake stroke again. So we gotta get it out. So we start it soon. We're learning the diminishing return on trying to keep it closed as long as we can on the power stroke and then open it at the last second. We need, actually need to start it sooner than that. So exhaust, opening is my second most important event. I have to think what I'm saying. I see a great picture of it, but I'm having a hard time explaining it to you. I hope you guys can hear me okay, Kenny, Flacco, David, Jeff. Um, I'm gonna move to my board now because I'm gonna expand on this a little bit.